Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, Augusto Argandonia Fine Arts. Any time in the course of this narrated tutorial, you can click on the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel. And also, I would appreciate your comments in regards to this video, or for that matter, any of the other tutorials in my channel. I have been receiving some very nice and positive comments about my uh, tutorials, and I would encourage you to continue sending me your comments, and I, pre I appreciate them very much, and I will try to respond to them in a timely manner. This tutorial is about how to paint palm trees, more specifically coconut palm trees at the beach. This particular scene happens to be at Isla Morada in uh, the south part of uh, Florida, somewhere between uh, Miami and Key West. It's one of those islands there. It's a very picturesque, beautiful island. And uh, its name is also very nice. Isla Morada means in Spanish, uh, or the, the translation to English would be um, Purple Island. Why they, why they call it that way, I have no clue, but that's, it's, that's the name. Anyway, without much uh, more to talk about it, I'm going to go ahead and start with this uh, tutorial. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm going to start by uh, painting the sky area. It's going to be a very sunny scene. Uh, the color of the water is going to be also very tropical looking. So. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some water into this area, in the sky area, pretty much covering where the, the fronds of the palm trees will be also, just going all over this place here. Some areas I'm going to leave the paper dry and uh, some areas will be covered with, uh, with, with blue. So with that in mind, I'm going to bring in some cerulean blue quite a bit of it, uh, combined with uh, cobalt blue, make a really nice, nice uh, sky color. And start laying out the color like that. So let's say where the paper is dry, it will be crisp, otherwise it will be, uh, um, you know, kind of, uh, combination of soft and hard edges there like that. And towards the horizon I'm going to just do a fairly wispy type of sky. Come down right to the horizon like that. And uh, that's pretty much it for the sky. I think I'm going to bring a little bit more straight cobalt blue in some areas, like that. Yeah, like that, okay. That's pretty much it for the sky. Just even it out this, this blue area. Like that. Yeah, okay. Uh, and I'm gonna leave the the sand pretty much white. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna add a little bit of water. I'm gonna add a little bit of color. It's 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 not exactly white. It has sort of a grayish tint. So on that water area on the wet paper, I'm gonna bring in some. Um, brown matter and cerulean blue again makes a really nice gray very little of the brown matter but mostly the cerulean and I'm going to just add a few touches of that gray and some are kind of soft like that there like that very soft. Also I'm going to bring in a really light burnt sienna in some areas just to warm up a few 
give it a few touches of warm hue to the sand. There, like that. That's about it. Probably most of that area will be covered with the shadows, but for now, I'm gonna do that. My sky is still wet, so I'm gonna wait for to do anything there. But in the meantime, this is this is almost dry. Yeah, I'm gonna wait there. In the meantime, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change brushes to a smaller brush and a small flat brush, and I'm gonna uh, use um, a beautiful color cobalt, cobalt turquoise light. Very, very beautiful color for tropical images with water. And uh, I'm gonna do that, bring some of that over here. And there's that cobalt turquoise light. There, like that. I'm gonna add a little bit, a very small amount of uh, green to that, very small. And I'm gonna do it, avoid these uh, trunks of the palm trees. My paper is at about 15 degree angle, so I'm relying quite a bit on uh, on uh, gravity for the water to move. I'm gonna leave some little edges there white for the waves that are breaking onto the to the shore. There like that. A little bit more water, I mean more pigment and less water in my brush. And like I said, a little bit of white there. And like that. A little break. There's a good reason why I'm leaving the, the trunks of the palm trees white, because they're gonna be getting quite a bit of sunlight and I don't want to put any other color there. There we are. There. Get rid of that little brush blossom there. A little bit more of that color in this area. Now I'm going to keep that color, but I will bring in some um, permanent sub green to it and some ultramarine blue. And change the hue of this water, the color. Give it a little bit of a greenish, greenish tint. There, like that. But keeping that uh, cobalt turquoise. right up to the beach, yeah, like that. I'm being very careful here to, to not touch the, the trunks of the palms there. Bring this over here, yeah, like that. And now I'm going to bring more ultramarine, much darker now. 
and they'll come over here and do some variation on the color of the water. Ultramarine and the green also, but mostly the ultramarine. Give it quite a bit of variation in the water. Just like that. A little less, less intense over here. area. Paper is beginning to dry now, which is the ideal time for me to do this variation on the color of the water. There. Like that. Now I'm going to clean my brush and bring the, the cobalt turquoise light again and touch that into the horizon. There we are. Just a little bit. A little bit over here too. Okay, and the water is pretty much done. Brush, clean my brush, now I'm gonna fill this. Okay, the paper is almost dry, so I'm gonna start doing the palm trees. Um, but I'm gonna do the trunks first. I'm gonna use uh, a little bit of um, brown matter and the cerulean blue. And uh, I'm gonna also add that very light touch of uh, sepia to it. And come over here. And um, this picture, this photo was taken around noon, so there was be there's gonna be quite a bit of shadows over here, and the the color of the trunks is gonna be lighter in some areas, darker in others. So I'm gonna drop this color right here like that. My, the water area is already dry, so I'm going to bring in a little bit more of the sepia. Like that. Sepia and ultramarine with a touch of brown matter, not much. Like that. One edge will be a little darker. There. And over here, we're gonna come back and do the little rings that uh, happen with those palm trees. Okay, I'm gonna go back to that light gray and come over here and do the other, other trunks. I'm going to add a very light uh, yellow ochre to that. There we are. There, there, there we go. That's the color that I want. The same thing over here. And I will do that with all the all the palm trunks. Oops. There. 
little bit more of the gray, cooler gray over here. Darken both later, but for now I'm not leaving like that. All right, so now we'll do the the, the, the trunk, the, the foliage, and for that I'm going to use uh, some uh, new gambos, a nice yellow. A little bit of raw sienna, and um, come up with do the, the the main vein of the of the bronze first, like that. Just a few, not too many. I'm also bringing a little bit of orange to some of the some of the veins of the of the the palm, the foliage. Uh, not too much because there will be quite a fair, quite a bit of uh, foliage over here. Like that. Same thing over here. That's better that way. Okay. that. Alright, so now I'm going to get the change brushes and um, start with the colors. I'm going to bring more of that uh, new gum bush with the um, permanent sub green. They're a very nice light tropical looking uh, color green for this. The best way to paint the, the fronts of the palm trees, this coconut palm tree especially, is to hold the brush back, but middle or all the way back if you have can control that. But don't do it like this because you're gonna lose control. So I'm gonna add a little bit more green, dark green to that. I'm gonna bring on also a little bit of cobalt blue to that. Keep in mind that these palms are swaying on the breeze, so you have to paint them that way. brush it to a smaller brush. Change the colors. The use of varieties of, of greens, that's the best way to do it. There we go. Hold, I'm holding the brush way back. Like that. And for the fine 
details you can hold your brush closer to the tip. some aureole in yellow to variety and uh, this uh, when this groupings of palm trees you have to paint them all together like this and like I said vary the colors don't stay with one color Also paint the center portion of the of the palm. And over here there's gonna be quite a bit. So I'm gonna do this. And then the prongs are together here, the same thing over here. together. The detail will come later. This is the base color. Now I'm going to start tightening up this, this the details. Like that. I'm going to bring, start bringing a different type of green. This would be undersea green with the ultramarine blue this time. Mostly color pigment. All these palms are together, so you have to paint them that way. When you start, when you try to uh, paint individual fronds without remembering that uh, all they are all blowing in the wind, uh, then you're going to run into problems. I'm going to bring in some granacidone uh, gold deep also, you know, different uh, 
different take on the colors. Like that. Don't overload your brush with water. This is best done with a dry brush. Like that. Start changing the value of the green, also, must bring some paints gray into start darkening some areas. With the dry brush, lends itself beautifully for that if you hold the brush about halfway. If you're gonna add water to your brush, just barely, barely touch the tip of the brush to the water only. I'm gonna add another color to it. I'm gonna bring in some sepia with that uh, green and the paint's gray. And work fast. Don't. Don't try to do this. Work really fast. That's the best way to, to paint the fronts of these palm trees, make them look more natural. And remember, I keep repeating it, they're blowing in the breeze, so have to remember that. And they are mingling, all the fronts are mingling together. You have to also remember that, don't, se don't separate them. Now I'm gonna start getting a little bit more detail to the, the darker areas. Dry brush effect makes works beautifully for this. As long as you move your brush quickly and uh, with a purpose, don't dilly dally around. Move with a purpose. And 
now I'm gonna clean the brush, clean my brush, and I'm gonna bring in another color. I'm gonna bring in some um, quinacridone gold. It's a beautiful color. It has a, has a very warm hue and a very very nice color. Had a little different uh, take on the, some of this bronze. Watch how I'm using, I'm holding the brush. I'm gonna bring some, with that quinacridone gold, I'm also gonna bring some um, cadmium orange. Notice how I'm holding the brush. Clean my brush and I'll bring some new gamboge, straight yellow. And fill in some of the areas like that. Just very quickly, also don't don't deal with dally on the in, in, in any one area. Just move your brush. With all these palm trees are they may look kind of separate because but the front, the trunks are separate but the fronts are very large and uh, very wild, so they, um, uh, they have to be painted that way. I'm, I'm a little bit more yellow here. Also, also gonna bring in some burnt sienna with that yellow. Also, still with a, with a dry brush. And there's some fronds that are dry already and just hanging towards the bottom to the center. We will paint them that way. I'm gonna put another one over here. Like that. So that's some of those colors over here. Uh, the palm trees are pretty much almost done. Now I'm going to clean my brush and uh, bring some very deep paints gray with the, with the green and the sea green. Very, very deep and almost a dry brush. And some of the fronds that are in the shade are gonna come out like this. Very dark, like that. Like that, there we are. There's some over here too. Some over here also. Okay. Now I'm going to take a flat brush. Remove most of the moisture from the brush and, uh, and then come back over here and uh, remove some of the pigment like that. Like that. Same thing over here. Again, holding the brush halfway. something over here okay 
make up a little bit of color here and there. But here through. Now is when you can hold the brush closer. In fact, I'm gonna hold and use a different brush. This will be better. Like that. Not, not a lot, just a few areas. Are done. So now uh, I'm going to pick up uh, some cobalt blue, some um, brown matter, mostly the cobalt blue. A little bit of ultramarine there too. And come over here and do this, this shadow side. All these fronts are casting a shadow on the, on the trunk here. And some of this will be a little darker, give a little bit of texture there like that. Same thing over here. Sienna to it, not much. Come over here and uh, make this a little darker, a little bit more ultramarine. This one will be pretty dark because it's catching a lot of a reflection, or rather, a lot of sh shadow areas on the fronts. So, yeah. Maybe like that. And this one be a little dark. Yeah. Make this a little darker. Make this a little darker there too. Okay, those are done. Um, add some, some of the rings at the base. Like that. Increase the value of that, those rings and the base. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to um, change brushes, pick up some of the New gamboge mixed with the green that I have in my palette. Uh, I come over here and there's this uh, area of land with some. Uh, I think I'm going to change brushes. With some um, vegetation, some palm trees into the distance. I'm going to make them a little lighter because of the distance. I'm also going to change the color. I'm going to bring some uh, 
uh, raw amber. Do that there. Give a little bit of background to that trunk. Make this a little darker. There, that little piece of land there. All right. Okay, so now this chair is going to, I'm going to give it a, a red towel hanging. Like that. And the chair itself, I'm going to give it a, it's a wood chair. Well, sepia and brown sienna. And we'll do it this way. darker color for that towel. There. Like that. Hanging. There like that. Now take um, my flat brush and uh, I'm going to get the brown matter with quite a bit of cerulean blue. But mostly the cerulean blue. And come over here and do the shadows. So add a little bit of cobalt blue to that too. Make this shadows quite dark. Ultramarine actually with that brown matter, very opaque color, very dark. This area will be very dark shadows. Yeah. Be very careful with that sand. Don't don't do away with the, all the whites. Some of the effect of the 
of the pan with the prongs. Not a lot, but just some. And I'm gonna add a little bit more of those colors in this area. I'm gonna make it, this will be a little darker. Okay, um, the painting is pretty much, I gotta get rid of that, there we are. Uh, also, lastly, I'm gonna take a small flat brush and uh, pick up some, lift some color in some areas, like that, very soft, especially over here. And that's pretty much it. So um, I think I'm gonna do some of this darker all the way. Yeah, that's better. Give it a little variety. Same thing here. All the way. Do a couple. Maybe this one too. Yeah, okay, that's better. And um, that's the way it's done. Now I'm gonna remove this tape. I'm gonna bring a dark board and you will see how this beautiful tropical island, Isla Morada, looks like. I think what I'm going to do also is uh, pick up some of the gray and some of the green and do another little island someplace over here. Just give a little bit more interest. Maybe a little, bring that island over here too. And maybe put another little island over here. Break that uh, monotony of that horizon. Here comes the dark board. And uh, look at this. I'm going to minimize it. And there it is. Coconut palm trees. The beautiful tropical island. Hope you enjoyed this video. And please uh, visit my website at aafinearts.com where you will see more of uh, my paintings, my prints, and information about my virtual classes. And appreciate your comments also. Thank you, until next time.